Hello, 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 hello. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting edition of Bible Study, Interactive Bible Study, where we study to show ourselves approved of God. We thank, we bless you, the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks for those who stayed as we are playing the intro. God will bless, increase, and prosper. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Body of Christ Center. I try to pass my wife, Pastor, from here. God bless you. Good evening. Welcome to Bible study. You are blessed and highly favored. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You join in right now. It's not by accident. It is by divine appointment. Welcome to Bible study. I welcome everybody all over the world. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. You are all welcome. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. Amen. And God will honor you all. Thanks for coming on to join us for interactive Bible study. We will try to show ourselves approved of God. We thank God for His goodness and mercy. We thank God for bringing us together again. And we thank God for Pastor Funke for standing in the fort, for taking control of ministry for the three, three weeks that was not around. We thank God. And we thank God. So I thank God for my dear wife, Pastor Funke, for standing in for the fourth. And God will bless you. God will honor you. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 So you are all welcome to interactive Bible study where we study to show ourselves approved. Make sure you begin to share, and God will bless, Amen. increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Amen. Actually, we are, I'm sure we're all glad to see Pastor Chris back on this platform for interactive Bible study. Praise the word of God mm, and welcome you. in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. It's well with you and God will bless in case and Amen. prosper you. We do appreciate you all for taking the time to join with us, even in this moment, in this season, this hour. And God will come to bless in case and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is your season, this is your moment. Don't forget that we are on two platforms, as you can see. We are on Facebook and we are also on YouTube. So please begin to share on Facebook page, share on your Facebook page. Share on your timeline, share with you the groups you belong to, and God will continue to bless, increase, and prosper you. And also share on WhatsApp, share on Instagram, and share on Messenger. And I believe that will continue to work as one as I Let's get as many people as possible on board, and let that God will bless you. Know, this is interactive. We are also on YouTube. Those who are watching by our YouTube, please make sure don't forget to inform your subscribers and those whom you are subscribed to so that we can all work together the glory of God, and God will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Let's see you all welcome in Jesus' name. Please don't come alone and buy somebody. Yes. No, them Bible study is on right it's away. On. And I know the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, will bless every one of us. And no life will be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. We give her all the praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for giving us the grace to be here again. Hallelujah. The last one is in the tenth month of this year. We bless and worship and praise Glory and adore you for God. your goodness and your mercy, for your love, for your for your compassion, for your grace, for your protection. Thank and you, Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for all over all our viewers. We thank you for ourselves. We thank you for your church. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy, for your protection. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Every sin that forgive in Jesus' name, send in your power, Holy Ghost. Amen. Have your way, begin to prove yourself like never before. Every evil work of the enemy we destroy, we pull down, we demolish in the name Amen. of Jesus. Mighty Father, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Mighty Father, I shall have your way, prove yourself, Amen. touch us like never before. Amen. Open our understanding. Amen. Open, Mighty Father, give us wisdom, understanding Amen. to know more of your word. We want to dig deeper in your Amen. word. Mighty Father, take control. Holy Ghost, come down and do a new work. Amen. Give us understanding Amen. even in the word. And thank you, Lord. Amen. We give all the praise Amen. because you're it already. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. be to God. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. This is we are joining. Invite somebody. Don't come alone. And God will continue to bless everyone of us. This is Bible study interactive. So let's invite somebody and let's be a part of this Bible study. And no life is going to be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you are welcome. And just don't forget Amen. to share, share, share. That is the key. Let's share. Let's bring as many people on board as possible. And I know that the Lord will bless everyone mm -hmm. of us. Mightily and marvelous in Jesus' name. This is the time for us to study. And, you know, bring your family abroad too. Let's all share together. Mm -hmm. You know, I know many of you can cast it to your TV. Many of you have smart TV. So you can go on your smart TV and open um, um, YouTube. That YouTube channel. Key that in so that all of you can watch. But also still have your device so that you can make comments through your device. So that all of you can watch as a family. I know you'll be blessed. All of us will be blessed. Mm -hmm. you know, and also... Get your questions ready. You know this interactive. We have question time. We have prayer time. We have prophetic time. We have the word time. We have praise time. All 
in one package. So make sure as you're joining, the will bless, increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelous, both on Facebook and on YouTube, and you're blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us go before God. Yeah, yes. Let us go before God and begin to offend you by God yes. and magnify Him. Let's thank Him for His faithfulness, for His goodness, for His mercy, for His grace in every life. Let's begin to thank Him in Jesus' name. Father, we thank Mighty you. Let's glorify you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. We are the master. Let's thank you for grace, for mercy. We give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify you. Hallowed be your name. We are grateful, O God. We are thankful, O God. The time is to bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. And forget not all this benefit that you have given us. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Forgive me, O God. Let's begin to pray. Mighty God, we come before you. Every sin of word of thought of deed. Father, forgive us that the blood of the begin to cleanse us, O God. Holy Ghost, cleanse us tonight, O God. Let the blood of Jesus begin to make us all. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If person wants us, he's spoken to us about adding more power belongs unto our God. Say, Lord, empower me tonight, O God, to receive from you. Let's begin to pray. Mighty God, eternal God, empower us tonight that we can receive from you. Holy Spirit, I want to receive from you. Empower me, O God, by your power, by your anointing. My own machine, I over God. Empower me, O God. Breathe upon me, O God. I'm so tired of God. Take care of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Bless the God. Lord, reveal your word to me tonight. Let me experience your word. Let me have an encounter with your word. Let's begin to pray. Mighty God, eternal God, empower me through your word, oh God. Open me spiritually. I will not come in vain. As many as I own tonight, touch every life. Let us see you, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's put down every strong God of the enemy. Let's begin to pray. Mighty God, we put down every strong God of the enemy. In the name of Joseph, the name of God. Holy Ghost, have your way. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We magnify you. We honor you, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we exalt your name one more time. We say, be magnified, be glorified, oh God. Holy Spirit, as we go forth into your ways, speak to our hearts, oh God. Touch us today. Yes, Let us see you, oh God. Yes, Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So once again, you are all welcome to Interactive Bible Study. We are so glad and so happy you are able to join with us. But do us a favor. Let's spread the news. Let's share the links. Let's call in our friends. SMS them. Text them. WhatsApp them. Email them. Just call them. Do Get your attention when we read that and let us begin to share mm -hmm. and let's call them and get the questions ready. You know, we have question time where we will share mm -hmm. questions and we dig deeper into the word of God. So we have question time, we have praise time, we have um, word time, we have all these things packed in one prayer time and your last shall never remain. Amen. We are not watching or tuning by asking but by divine power and God will divinely locate you like never before Amen. in the moment. So you are all welcome to just share, share, share. Right now we're going to go into prison and worship get ready after our choir. We will be leading us in prison and worship. Let's all join together. They are not entertaining us, but they will, they will all be ministering unto the Lord together. Yes. So please, let's join us for our choir, and God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessed Jesus, we've come to give you praise. You are worthy. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed Jesus, we come to give you praise. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, and blessed be your name, Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus, we come to give you praise.
of this, you are the lily of the valley, you are the bride and morning star, you are the rose of Sharon, we are grateful, oh God, our thanks given, oh God, thank you, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray, let's let the Lord touch me with your word tonight, oh God, let your word touch me tonight, let's begin to pray, mighty God, eternal God, the only one of Israel, Help. Touch me, oh God, with your word tonight. Let your word touch me tonight. I look up to you, oh God. Let your word touch me tonight, oh God. Even like never before. Let your word touch us tonight, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say, Lord, let your word deliver me, oh God. From every captivity, let's begin to pray. Mighty God, eternal God, let your word deliver tonight from any form of captivity. Deliver us, O God, by your power, by your anointing. Deliver, O God. Makori, Mashira, Masila, Karoba, Gariya. Father, deliver tonight, O God, from every captivity. Let your word set us free, O God. Makora, Gado, Baragada. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Yes. Sorry. Let's go before God and tell God that Lord, transform my life yes, inside and through your word. Let's begin to pray. Father, you have asked for a transformation. Oh God, transform my life. Transform my children, my sister, their children, their spouses. Oh God, let there be a great transformation in our lives. Oh God, we cry out to you. We look up to you. Let there be a transformation. Oh God, here in my hands. So far, in the ocean. Amen. Tonight, Lord, meet me at the very point of my need to your word. Begin to pray. Father, you have asked for a transformation. Oh God, oh God, meet me, oh God, at the very point of my need, oh God, meet me tonight, oh God, through your word, oh God, meet us tonight, we cry out to you, meet us tonight, through your word, oh God, dear Lord, amen. Let me pray again, thank you, Lord. Your word I will hear. To, let me see myself. Let your word be like a mirror to me. Yes. I will see myself clearly and make the necessary adjustment. Let, adjustment. let me give you a prayer. Father, 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 let your word be like a mirror to me. Let your word be a mirror in my life, oh Lord. Lord so that you reveal me to me. And the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit. Father, give me that mirror. Let your word be like a mirror. Mirror to me. Mirror to me. Mirror to me. Mirror to me. In Jesus' mighty name. Mirror to me. Mirror to me. Mirror to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's thank God as I'm here to have the for this word and he let them. Let your word bath healing in my life. Let your word heal me, body, soul, and spirit. Let's yeah. begin to cry out to God. Mighty God, eternal God. Let your word heal me, body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let your word become fire in my bones, oh God. Let's begin to pray. Mighty God, eternal God. Let your word become fire in my bones. Fire the blood in my life, oh God. Let your word become fire in my bones, oh God. Oh my God, I will see that fire. Jesus. Name we pray. Amen. Lord, reveal yourself to me. He will like never before in a mighty, and special way. Let's begin to pray. Father, come before you. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal yourself. 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 Reveal yourself.
not what I have tonight. Let me go to my next level. Take me to my next level. Next level. Next level. Next level. In you. Let me do more. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Let's be the Lord. Through your word tonight, set me free from every sin that easily besets me. Begin to pray and tell me. Lord, we pray tonight. Through your word tonight, let me free. Let me sin. Let me be set on. Free. Lord, free us. Let us free. 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 Lord, be glorified through your word tonight. Let's begin to pray. Let me be for you. Be lifted high through, through your word tonight. Be lifted high. 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 Every every hand of the enemy, let it wither by fire. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Every hand of the enemy, wither, 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 Father, we thank you. Bless you. Yeah. We give you all the praise. We are now. We have made our prayers unto you. Mm-hmm. Grant our request. Mm-hmm. Have your way. Mm-hmm. Let let me go in fact. Mm-hmm. We declare and declare and decree. And that whatever we say should go is gone in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. All those who have called, called to forth to come, we declare those who have come forth in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Every evil work of the enemy will destroy with the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Have your way, O Lord. Bless us, O Lord, and reveal yourself to us. Even as I go into your word, reveal yourself to us. Let us have deep understanding in your word mm-hmm. and let your name be glorified. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. amen, amen. Once again, you are welcome to Interactive Bible Study. Where we study to show ourselves a proof of God. Right now, very simple. We'll be going into the summary. You know, we're treating and talking about the beautitudes in the Bible. The beautitudes in the Bible. And we thank God for that. And as we are doing this summary, please, if you have any questions, maybe you are reading your Bible. We were speaking to some friends, or maybe we saw something on social media, or radio, or TV, or something just came pop in your head. You began to wonder if you want some light, light shone on it. You can throw in your questions either on Facebook or YouTube. We pick it up and then we we'll discuss it after the summary. So you can begin to post in your questions, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll be reading Matthew chapter five, from verses three to twelve. Matthew five, verses three to twelve. Please get your Bibles. Bible study and it's interactive. So let's all be a part of this and God will bless every one of us even like never before in Jesus' name. Matthew 5, verses 3 to 12, please. Verse 3 says, <coughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness sake, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are the pure in hearts, for they shall see God. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they that have blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven verse 11 says blessed are ye when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say a man of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad for good is your reward in heaven 
For so persecuted did the prophets which were before you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All and the all the time, all the time, God is good. We're going to be doing a brief summary of what we have been doing and talking about so far. And as I did the summary, is the beatitudes. Please, if you have any questions, as I said before, you can begin to post in your questions. And we pick it up either on Facebook or YouTube. And God will bless in case and trust by you. If you have questions today, and God will bless us all in Jesus' name. And you welcome every servant of God online. And so Roland from Uganda, God bless you, great servant of God. And everyone behind the scene, God bless you. And everyone on tonight, God behind the scene, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. Minister Bridget from Italy, welcome on YouTube. And God will bless you and prosper you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the summary of what we've been doing, Matthew 5, verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the earth is the kingdom of heaven. The Bible is saying that when we are poor in the spirit, that is anyone that is poor in the spirit, is someone that is saying, Lord, I want more of you, I want to know you better. They are not saying, you know what, I know it all. They are saying, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And God will help us to be hungry for him in Jesus' name. Verse 4 says, Blessed are the day that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Which means that when somebody commits error or does something that is not according to God's will, and they feel sorry for it, they repent, then they shall be comforted. That is, they will have peace of mind, they will feel that release. Why? Because that body has been removed and they are remorse and they have repented and they are doing it again. Therefore, they are comforted. The Holy Ghost will not comfort them because God said, And do not give the Holy Spirit of God in whom you are saved for the day of redemption. Which means they are not giving the Holy Spirit and then they will live happily. Why? Because happiness is in Christ. Verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. That is, we have said that those who are meek are those who are humble in the spirit. They are people that are not arrogant. They are not full of pride. They have no pride in them. They are always willing to learn. Says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. If anybody is meek, is any, if anybody is not arrogant, somebody is not proud. At the end of the day, they will be able to fulfill their destiny. We we'll pray that every one of us will fulfill our destiny and the grace. To be meek, to be humble. May God give it to us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And so, verse 6 says, I did a hunger and thirst after righteousness, for it shall be filled. Which means that what do you test after? Do you test after the things of God? Do you test after the things of the Spirit? Or do you test after the flesh? If you test after the things of God, then your reward is that you will be filled and satisfied and you have peace of mind. But if you test after after the world, there's chaos, there's mm -hmm. pandemonia. There is, there is a sleepless night, all these things, because all these things in the world cannot bring peace. So, what do you test after? And Jesus has given us a very those who test and hunger after righteousness sake, for they shall be satisfied or be filled. So, Amen. let us begin to test after and say, and God will bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. As seven says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Beloved of God, God wants us to be merciful to our fellow human beings. That is why God is that is why God is merciful to us, beloved of God. We need to show mercy. And how and we and we discuss how do we show mercy by forgiving others, by being good to others, by being kind to others through the things we say, through our actions, through whatever we do. Beloved of God, Bible says, blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. If we want God to be merciful to us, then we have to be merciful to our fellow human beings. Verse eight. Verse eight. Did you, did you do seven? I see, yeah, I've done. You've done seven okay, okay, okay. So I want me to do verse okay. 8 because you are not here. Okay. You've done verse 7 just now, so you yes. do verse 8, yes. Okay. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We said the pure in heart are those who are obeying God, those who are following the will and purposes of God, those who are hearers and doers of the world. And we said, what are the things that can do somebody impure? If anybody's living a reckless life, a life of sin, they will be impure in heart. And we said that. Those who are impure in heart, they shall not see God. It is only those who are living for Jesus, who are obeying God, that will see God. And I pray that the grace and the anointing and the power to live a life that is pleasing unto God, to live a life of purity, may God give it to us so that at the end of the day, we shall see God. Those who are those who will see God will those who will make it to heaven. When a believer will die, or when anyone will die, there are two destinations, that, and, it's, and, and, and it is by choice, it is by what we do. Heaven or hell, and we said it's profitable for us to go to heaven. That's why John 14 1 says, He says, And let not your heart be troubled. 
um, believe in me and also um, believe in God and also believe in me for I am going to pray a place for you and if I'm going to pray a place for you where I am that is where you will be beloved of God God is going to prepare a place for us and we have to walk in line with the word of God so that we will not go to hell fire if you know you are going to heaven say I am say I am going to make heaven in Jesus name amen 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 so God bless us that's some of what we've been so far and God will bless in case I'm first fire. Right now it's question time. I believe it's question time. So if you have any questions, maybe you are um as I said, reading your Bible, or maybe you are talking to some friends, or maybe you are um, um had something on TV or radio, or you saw something on social media, you want some light to be shown on it, so you want to ha have more understanding, then you can throw in your questions right now on Facebook and YouTube. You pick them up and do them together and know that go with this because you know this program is interactive iron sharpening iron so we are all learning together and when you ask questions it doesn't mean that you don't understand you just that you want to know more and knowledge gained is nothing lost you are you have added to yourself to know more of God. So begin to throw your questions and God will bless in Christ Apostle. And it shows that if you have questions, it's also showing that you are studying your Bible, you have a curious mind, and you want to know more in the Lord. And God will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. We have a question already, which is from Sister Abigail. To say you, thank you. God bless you. In Numbers 14, the other men who were appointed to spy the land, God promised the Israelites died through the plague because of their bad report as a result of fear that led to the Israelites complaining against God. So does this mean that there are consequences for people who cause others to sin against God, either by their ways or causing fear in them? For example, someone who mocks a barren woman which then leads to the barren woman complaining and questioning God. Just a thought. Well, to an extent, because if you look at um, the spies in Numbers 24, Twelve spies went out to spy um, the, um, the the the, the, the promised land. land, but the Bible says that only two, Joshua and Caleb, came back with a good report. But the other ten said, "Oh, we are like grasshoppers in their sight." And the Bible said, "God said, look, since you say you are like grasshoppers, you will die." And because and by the time they came back, by the time they began to give the bad report to other Israelites. They all began to cry out to God, why did you bring us here, blah, blah, blah. And because of that, God was angry. Remember, God said, we must not be a partaker of another man's sin. Why did most, um, most of the people actually left um, Egypt, died in the wilderness from 40 years above? The, sorry, is it 20? From 20 years above, it was because of unbelief. They did not believe God. The Bible says, it says, Anything that is not of faith, it is sin. Every time we are doubting God, it is sin. And then every time we allow somebody to fall into sin, we must not be a partaker of another man's sin. I know there are many ways that somebody can make others to sin by the things we do, by the things we say, by the places we go to. So we need to be very capable of be not be a partaker of another man's sin. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And in addition to what Pastor has said, these people came, they brought a bad report, and they instilled fear into the whole camp. Yeah. And because of this, the camp was thinking that they, are, they had a wasted journey and where they're supposed to go to, they cannot take over, they cannot rule over. And because of that, God got annoyed with them. So the news they had was why they complained. Mm -hmm. Now, in your example, you get, or your question that you're asking, that if, now, if somebody complains about a particular thing, I believe that even in our world of today, you should open your eyes before you join the bandwagon of yeah. complainants. Because sometimes God will just do a general punishment for everyone, just as He did for them. Punishment. So, for them, just as He did hmm. there. So, but the example you gave about the barren woman saying that people are making fun of her is not in the same area. It's not the same line of of, of consequences. Now, these people got bad reports. And the bad report, for example, now somebody is in a church and said this church is not good, and people are beginning to mourn, they complain and complain, and they leave the church. Now that is consequences. That's exactly what happened in the days of the Israelites. Now, in this example you are giving about the barren woman, people may be making fun of her. Now, that does not now make her to go and complain and begin to question God. If she does that, I believe that such a person is a faithless person. That person should know. The type of God she's worshiping. That's exactly what Anna faced. Anna faced the provocation 
from Penina, and Anna did not take it out on God. Anna did not question God. Anna did not quarrel against God. Anna did not speak against God. Rather, yeah. Anna went and yeah. began to plead with God. That God, give me a child. Give me a male child. So that at least I can return this male child back to you. So you can see in the prayers of Anna, she did not complain. She did not moan against God. She did not complain against God. She did not question God or query God. She just kept on making a plea with God and Lord. Have mercy on me. So, mm -hmm. if anybody is making fun of any individual, that's that that individual who is in question to make to take their stand in God. I would say they should use Hannah's formula, whereby they kept on going to God, mm -hmm. they kept on worshiping God. They not because many people in churches today, when people make fun of them, they withdraw from the church, they withdraw from God, they withdraw from things of God. That is not the solution. Anna did not do that. What did Anna do? Anna even went to the mall and spent more time in the presence of God mm -hmm. and knelt down and then she made a vow and God honored her and granted her request. Assuming that year she did not go because Penina had made fun of her. She would have missed out and Samuel would have come to somebody else. But because she put that aside, mm -hmm. she did not look at the provocation, she did not look about, the, about what people are saying and that's one thing we need to do as individuals. Don't focus on what people are saying. Try the mm. negative things that people are saying. Oh, look at that woman. She's so old. She's not married. Don't look at that. Look at that man. He's so he's been working, working, nothing to show for him. Never ever look at that. Always set your focus on Christ. Because Hallelujah. Christ will come through for you. And let's remember uh, Anna's formula. Anna had a formula which she used, and that formula paid off. The formula of ignoring the formula. Now, after all said and done, as she had someone. She was able to speak and she spoke out in Samuel chapter 4, Samuel chapter 2. And mm. you see what she spoke that God has silenced the mocker, Hallelujah. God has made fun of them, God has put disgrace on them. <laughs> so you can see what had happened. So, the most important thing is that when people make fun of you in whatever, so you can make fun of somebody, like, you go to church too much, your own is too much. Mm -hmm. Don't answer that. Keep on going to church because God will bring something out just as Anna, Anna's formula. And I believe the Lord will work his wonders and miracles in heaven. So when people are complaining about things, telling about things of God, don't join them because you know it's very dangerous. Because the way God sees things is different from the way we human beings see things. So it's best to keep your mouth shut. And then so that you will not fall into the consequences of what they begin to suffer when God begins to mark iniquity. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, may God deliver us in Jesus. I believe that that answers your question, uh, my dear sister. And God will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God, there's no perfect human being. You also are not perfect. No pastor is perfect. No human being is perfect. And you know what? We should not dwell on their imperfection. Look at Moses. Moses was a stammerer. We never had anybody making fun of the wickedness of Moses as a stammerer. Mm. We never had nobody complain about that. That Moses is slow of speech. We cannot understand him. We don't know. They took Moses the way he was, and they had Moses speaking the way he was. He was stammering, and God was glorified. Which means that no matter what it is, your pastors, your leaders, they have weaknesses, they have strength. No matter what it is, whether it's weakness or strength, just make sure that you praise God to the glory of His name so that you will not fall under any condemnation. And may God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So it is well. Any other question? So I believe that answers the question. Thanks for those who are writing Hannah's formula. Hannah's formula is very good. And may God give us the grace to adhere and walk amen. towards it. Because, you know, one thing is that we need to overlook and ignore what people are saying. People will talk. Whether you are trying to be good or you are nasty, people will talk. Nobody can satisfy the whole. Even Jesus, when he came, who is God, who is greater of the, uh, who created the earth and the heavens, when he came here on earth, they still made fun of him. They did not receive him. They did not accept him. And they crucified him. In the end, they killed him, thinking that, that it was over. But you know, he came out. So what am I saying? That always... Don't allow what people are saying stick on you. You stick on the Lord, stick on the word of God, because people will always talk. Stick on the word of God, and I tell you, that will give you the grace to be able to overcome what people are saying. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So I don't think we have any other question. And if you have questions, please post in your questions either on Facebook or YouTube, mm. and then we can move on, and God will bless us all amen. in the name of Jesus, and God will honor himself even in our lives and destinies Amen. in the name of Jesus. 
You are going to begin to walk his wonders and miracles even in our lives. Amen. So once again, you are welcome to interactive Bible study. We will try to show ourselves approved of God, and God will honor you and bless you. And God begin to work his wonders and miracles even in our life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Someone has a question I see popping up here. It's not there, but it's here. It says Acts 2 22 16. Don't come up here. Acts 22 16. It says, Paul said, Paul said, I saw a vision of Jesus saying to me, Hurry, leave Jerusalem. Why did Paul still went to Jerusalem? Now, um, what you're talking about here, if I remember very well, is different from when Paul went to Jerusalem. Paul was talking about his vision of Jesus. I can't remember if it was King Felix or is it King? No, the Governor Felix or Governor Festus. Paul was talking and explaining to them, or maybe it was the Pharisees group. I can't remember. I know you spoke about. So he was telling them that. It was, it was, it was, he had a vision whereby um, God told him to leave Jerusalem because number one, they would not accept his vision. And number two, the assignment of Paul was not to the people of Jerusalem. The assignment of Paul was to the Gentiles. And there were few Gentiles in Jerusalem. Gentile, Jerusalem was full of Jews and all that. So God had to tell him, leave Jerusalem and go to where i have sent you where the gentiles are and that was why god told him just leave this but this was in the beginning of paul's ministry when he came the first time to jerusalem and the um and the uh, apostles and elders were afraid to move near him then Barnabas brought him and took about his encounter and after that what happened he began to walk with them and began to preach but christ appeared to him that look this is not your assignment. Your assignment is outside Jerusalem. Outside Jerusalem. So leave Jerusalem. And that's different from the case whereby Paul now went back to Jerusalem. You understand? So there are two different instances. This one you're, you're asking is talking about the beginning of Paul's ministry, where Christ told him, leave Jerusalem. Into, and you can see that Paul left and then he went to Antioch and in Acts 13, the Bible says that the, the, the Holy Spirit said, um, uh, release Paul and Barnabas for me to the work I have called them to do. So that is when Paul now moved into Gentiles and began to speak to them. So that's why Jesus told him to leave Jerusalem. I hope you understand. So he didn't go back to Jerusalem then. He went back to Jerusalem after many, 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 many years. And that will help us in the name of Jesus. So I hope that answers the question. So the question, let me see if I can put the question up because it's not on. Um, I don't know if people can see it, but. Let me just put it up there so you can see. And that's the question that came that um because it's not shown on all the verses, so the people may not see, but that's the question. That why did Paul uh, so you see a vision and why did he go back to Jerusalem? So there are two different instances. There's not less than 14 years gap in between when Paul was speaking and that because Paul was speaking about I know a man 14 years ago. So we can see that that's what happened there. Just to read it, it says that's from Acts 22 to Acts from verse 17. Later, when I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord saying to me, Hurry, leave Jerusalem quickly because the people no, here will not accept your testimony about mm -hmm. me. Lord, I answered, They know very well that it, that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believe in you. So, like Pastor said, may we be at the right place at the right time. May we not leave the place of our assignment. That is it. Though. Yes, Paul was not meant to be in Jerusalem. He's meant to go all over the world because Paul was sent to the Gentiles. Yes. Sir. So because and maybe because of Paul's background, they knew it was um it was um, it was it was it was Antichrist. Yes, it, yes, it was an Antichrist. He was a persecutor. And truly, truly, if somebody and let's believe somebody has actually been a, an an architect of. Killing Christians, we now say I'm born again. Everybody will be running away from him. <laughs> By the time we we'll say ten words, if there's one person who will listen to one word, it will be it, it will take grace. So Jesus said, Look, don't waste your time in Jerusalem. Move to where I've sent you to all over the world. And that happened with the apostles. The apostles who are the apostles and elders, they were afraid to move with Paul. It was until yeah. Barnabas brought him <clears> in <throat> and began to retreat what how he had an encounter with Jesus. And after that, they watched him and he began to be, he was able to move freely. Mm -hmm. But that's when, when now Christ appeared to him, leave Jerusalem because I'm going to send you forth to the Gentiles. And that is telling us 
that you see even as christians we need to know what god wants us to do everyone yes. has an assignment everyone and some people and some people are uh, assignment is for a particular church or particular ministry and if they leave it, that church or ministry they may not be fulfilled in life and that's why you see it's not just moving and cruising around churches that mm-hmm. matter mm-hmm. but what is your assignment and where does god want me to carry out this assignment mm-hmm. you see this example is a good example of where many people many christians make the mistake mm-hmm. they just think that they can just move at will and go at will no what is your assignment and where does god want you to fulfill that assignment mm-hmm. there's always an assignment and fulfillment of an assignment in a particular mm-hmm. place and when you fulfill that assignment you'll be happy for example we know the story of people have seen the assistant of baba oyedepo i've forgotten that man's name I know sure it's yes there's a time when you to move away and this and that and it stayed now see how it's flourishing i'm not giving examples of staying where God... people wanted him to move not him <laughs> we wanted him. To, we wanted him to move and not him but he stayed where and see how it's flourishing now now assuming he moved only God knows where he will be. That was a good example of knowing where God wants you to be and be in that place. Because when you are in the place where God wants you to be, you will flourish, you will expand, you will increase, and you will prosper. And that is the most important thing. The most important thing is being fulfilled, flourishing, and being where God wants you to be. Now, the question, let me ask a question out of this. How can you know where God wants you to be? How can you know as a Christian, as a Christian, as a child of God, how can you know where God wants you to be? That's a, that's a question that many people will be asking now. How can you know, thinking about the ministry of the church you are, how can you know where God wants you to be? How can you know? Because that is a very important question that people, I believe that, is people's heart that, am I in the right place? Am I in the place that I will rooted and grounded? Am I in the place where God wants me to be, or am I in the wrong place? So, how can a child of God know that they are in the right place where they will be grounded and rooted and grow in where they are? That is the question. That's why we will not be uprooted when yes, we so. planted. Hmm. You know, many people they move out of emotions yes. out of somebody has offended then, me mm. or somebody is moving so let me move to mm. this race this christian race is a personal race it is. it's not collective mm. at the end of the day when jesus will come we will all give an account of everything yes. we have done one by one yes. not as a church not as not not collectively that's why we need to know that wherever we are god has put us there yes and if god has put it if god has put you in the ministry don't just carry church. your bag and leave mm. because you feel offended. Mm. Who told anybody that when you are in a place, everything they will do will actually be what you bed want? Or, 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 yes, that is not a bed of roses. That's why we have to be very careful. And I believe that um, when you are in a place, no matter what is happening around you, you will flourish in the place. Yes, sir. You have peace in the place. Yes, sir. And if our adventure God wants you to move, it will be very clear. It is, it is. It is not that, oh, I have a quarrel, so let me leave. No, you don't leave a place because you have a quarrel. You leave a place because God says leave. And when you are, I tell people, I say, look, if you are in a ministry and people have the habit, you are in a place, no matter what is happening there, and you feel, well, I want to, it's just a feeling. Don't just go by your feelings. Mm-hmm. I tell people, I say, look, if you are moving, know why you are moving and know where you are moving to because mm-hmm. if you don't know where you are moving to that is why many christians today they end up in their sitting room Excuse and me. they end up becoming backsliders mm-hmm. because when they were moving in the first place oh okay, the pastor me. offended me mm-hmm. the pastor's wife didn't greet me well oh the elders did this to me so i have to move and by the time they move go and check their lives they end up in their sitting rooms and then they end up to be backsliders because when they were living they were not sure of where they were going. They were just allowing their emotions to lead them. Some people, it is their friends that will lead them. Ah, you are saying that ministry, me, I am living though, you stay there. And then, by the time their friends will leave, they will follow mm-hmm. their friends. And who knows, maybe that friend, the one that left, is maybe that person's time is up in that ministry. And you, that you follow because mm-hmm. you cannot receive from God by yourself. That's why we need to know God personally know where god has planted you know where you are, where you are. i will give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you 
and cause you to prosper. May God help us in Jesus' name. So it's very important to know. I remember very well when God wanted us to leave and where we were. Not that we, there were any houses or anything. We spent about 13 years there or so. And God said it's time to leave. And God gave us the reason why we are leaving that He has a greater assignment for us. And He has a broader assignment for us that we may not necessarily be able to fulfill where we were. And then we went to meet the head and we spoke to him and explained to him. We even gave him notice that, look, we are leaving in three months' time. Not that yeah. we are saying we are leaving tomorrow. So I remember it was September and we told him we are leaving at the end of December. So we gave him, because there was time for them to adjust and plan what they want to plan, and we move. And thank God we moved. You can see us today. You see, there was a reason for moving. Not that they, offend, they didn't offend us, didn't do anything, but it was time for us to move, and we moved. So sometimes people do move, but not in all instances. If God wants you to move, that means that there's a greater assignment yeah. that he wants you to do. Just as he told Paul, get out of your side. There's mm -hmm. a greater assignment I have for you. To in the Gentile, and when you can see, look at all the letters that Paul wrote, it was all to the Gentiles. You can see, so you can see that he was able to fulfill his assignment because he obeyed and he moved at that time. But look at Timothy, Timothy stayed with Paul throughout and he was able to flourish under, under, under Paul. Why? Because he was planted and rooted and grounded with Paul and he flourished. Look at Mark 2, John Mark. Who wrote mm -hmm. the book of Mark? He was under Peter, and this guy flourished. He tried moving with Paul and Barnabas, mm -hmm. but after a while, he went back to Peter again, going in the Bible very well. And then he flourished and flourished because he was rooted and grounded with Peter. So you can see that there are people like that in the Bible that they will stay and be rooted and grounded, and they will flourish where they are. But the people that God will say, Move on, you understand? So you need to know. But how are you going to know that where you are is the place that you're supposed to? Some people are answering. Some, somebody said, True one's growth. And God can also show us in our dreams. Of course, if you are growing where you are, where you yes. are, and you are rooted, and you are being blessed, and you are flourishing, that means that that is the place where God yes. wants you to be. Because there's no use being flourishing and then leaving. And people do that. When they are in a place, they become mm -hmm. empty-handed, and God will answer their prayers. God will grant their requests. God will make them fat. God will bless them. And now they decide that I want to move. And if they move now, the same grace they enjoyed in that place, they may not enjoy it somewhere else. And you see, the irony of all is that they find it difficult to come back. It's out of fright. I know what I'm saying. They find it difficult to come back. Why? Because they can now see the difference. And they find it difficult to come back to where they're supposed to flourish. And mm -hmm. sometimes they just fizzle out. Maybe not fizzle out. That's why we need to pray very well, Lord. Let me read and grant it where you have put me and let me flourish where I am and I believe we shall flourish in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I've seen with the experience of my little experience of life, I've seen people within 10 years they've been to 10 ministries. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with you? Hmm. You go from ministry to ministry to ministry to ministry. If it's not holiness today, it's a fire ministry. If it's not fire ministry today, it is Jesus is coming back tomorrow. If it's not Jesus is coming back tomorrow, it's evangelical. It's, so we are just, they're just people cruise, cruising all over the place. And people like that go and check them, they are not growing. And some of them will even go and now form a church. Hmm. And go and check them out, the church will not last. Of course. Because it's because... That's not assignment. Yes, because it's because they are just cruising around, cruising around, cruising around. After everybody say, okay, me too, I know. Because every, some people, every pastor is not a good pastor. Hmm. They are the only one that is good. So, okay, now let me go and try. And when they now go and try the pulpit, they will now realize that it is not easy to carry a pulpit. <laughs> and by the time you know it, they will now say, I'm... You end up in a sitting room, pastor. Please, don't get me wrong, go. You'll be shocked. After COVID, after these two years of COVID, now we know those whom God has called. No, it's true. No, 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 no. Many people, because go and check it out. Somebody is a drama somewhere, and the pastor offended the person. Oh, no, don't run that way. Eh? Is that me you're talking to? Do you know when I go out there, people are paying me to drum. And by the time they know it, they will go and get a pulpit. During COVID, eh? look, COVID leveled everything. Now, okay, who well, now? Because who can actually stand the prayer of COVID? It is those whom God has called. Those whom God has called, they have come up a long time ago. Those that, are not called. I mean, I mean, sorry, sorry. Those whom have not been called, those whom God has not called, they have packed, they, look, they packed up a long time ago. Because many people, they will leave. Or some people say, oh, because I don't have a job. Excuse me. You don't go and carry a puppy because, because you don't have a job. No. If you don't have a job and you are called, I mean, you are not called. Don't even try it. Because I'm telling you. Because you don't have that call. Because, oh, now what, what can I do now? 
everywhere, everywhere I go to, I can't stay in the job. Let me tell you something. If a man or woman cannot hold a job mm. out of because of character, when they have a ministry, they themselves, the, the ministry cannot last long. I'll never forget in my life. One time I worked for, I, I went for a for a program in one church. And I was sitting with a beside the pastor. And when it was break time, because it was for seven days, and we had break. A whole day for seven days. And when we had break, we started talking. And the man said something. He said, hmm, those bad headed people of my ministry. I don't allow them to take off. I said, hey, what did you say? And now I'm thinking, if God has really, really called you, why would you call members of your ministry bad head people? And, and in my head, I'm, that day I just, the next day I did not sit next to me. I said, this one, this one will be bad market for me. How can you be calling your church members bad head people? Because he doesn't have the call. Because he just got into a job. Because he's, because, because, because he's looking for a job to do. You see, you don't want to carry a pulpit because you think, oh, well, since I have seen, since, since, since nobody wants to employ me, let me just go into ministry. No, it's not like that. And that's why I don't, to be honest, I hate it when people up mm. from ministry to ministry. We call them charismatic Christians. Today, they are one ministry. Tomorrow, they, there's always something wrong with every ministry. Is there a perfect ministry on this earth? Every ministry is, that any ministry is being, and um, every, I mean, e any, yes, the leader of any ministry is either, a, a, is always a human being. Flesh and blood. So definitely, they have some flaws. So let nobody say, oh, I'm looking for a perfect church. Excuse me. There's no perfect church anywhere. There's no perfect human being. We are moving towards perfection. That's why people should stop moving from ministry to ministry. I don't know, um, before COVID, it was as if churches were just recycling church members. This one will leave this one. When, and when you interview that person, they be to seven ministries within 10 months. Excuse me, what is wrong? People like that will never grow. That's why. I tell people, if you are living a place, ask yourself, why am I living? That's why if you are going to start a ministry, don't start a ministry because somebody has offended you. If you go to start a ministry because somebody has offended you, you'll be operating with, uh, with bitterness. Your ministry will be full of bitterness because you are not even healed from wherever you are coming from. That is why, if you know you want to leave a place, sit, pray, fast. God, do you want me to leave this place and make sure it is not your flesh talking to you? Because people just up now, they go from ministry to ministry, and by the time they know it, they go to one place, scatter the place, go to another place, scatter the place in the name of um and being moved by the spirit to move, and in and eventually they will end up in their sitting room and they will now form a church. And by the time they form a church, they are the only members, they are the choir mistress, they are the choir master, they are the one doing everything. Nobody is coming. Beloved, we need to be very careful. This open must stop in Christendom. That's why we have too many baby Christians. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody says your spirit just knows God leads and speaks. I'm talking about how do you know you're in the right place? Somebody says true revelations. Yes. And somebody says God's voice is the most important and most authentic source of instructions. However, you must have been genuinely familiar with his voice and he will give you the instruction with clarity without confusion or base. On your emotions. That is it. Very important. And somebody says you will have peace and flourish. Yes. When you are aware of what God wants you to be, you have peace, you will flourish because God will give you pastors who will care for you, yes. who will tend for you, and who will be after your good. And also, you also will have peace of mind. Just like a sheep that once there's grass and once there's um, water mm -hmm. and everything, once there's shade, what is the sheep going? Um, why, is it, why would the sheep want to go somewhere else when all the sheep needs is getting it there? So also, and that's how the church is also. If you are in a church and all what you need, you are getting it there. You are being encouraged. You are prospering. And how do you know you can? You are if you got it to a church like on level zero, hmm. and over years you can see yourself level ten, level fifteen. That means that you are increasing. Of course, that's where God wants you to be and you have peace of mind for example you have been praying for something and you get to a church and in that church you get that thing that's a sign that god is telling you that this is where he wants you to be rooted and grounded and that's how you see people who just cruise around they mm. go from one church to the other go from one meeting to the other from one deliverance to the other from one to the other they cannot get much why because they're just moving around 
this has to do with somebody staying rooted and yeah. grounded in a particular place. Because my sheep hear my voice. And they know, and they know me. And they don't go to anybody else. And they follow me wherever I go. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. It's a process. Don't let anyone deceive you. If you come today, by tomorrow you get husband, by next tomorrow you become pregnant, by the day after you give up your baby, all these things are in, because our God is not a magician. Mm. God is a God of timing. Mm. And we can see in the Bible over and over and over in the case of David, Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, Anna, Moses, God is a God of timing. He has his mm. own time for things. So don't allow anyone to cajole you with miracles and with instant miracles mm. that happens overnight. Nothing happens overnight. I've been to, I've heard people say mm. that by tomorrow, I declare, there will be a million pounds in your account and tomorrow comes and there's nothing, you see? So, go to a place where you'll be rooted and grounded and you grow in the Lord and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why people should stop cruising around. Mm. Stay put. Do you know, if somebody is in a place and they are not growing, that's a different case. It's another case. Mm. The person is not growing, they're not being fed, they know they are playing. Even mm. God Himself will tell you, move Oof. on. Yes, sir. Because God knows that you are not, you are not, you are not gaining. being fed. Mm. You are not gaining. You are not on the same spot. And they will not be on the same spot. That's a different mm. case entirely. But if at the end of the day, you are being fed, mm. when you came into the ministry, you were nothing. You only have one trousers. Now you have more than one trousers. Now, by the grace of God, everything around is becoming very, uh, everything is flourishing. That's why I, I hate it when people will open their mouth like that. They'll just be chatting rubbish about pastors. B forgetting when they got to that ministry, they were nothing. You know. mm -hmm. Now that God has really helped them through that pastor, they now begin to put the man or servant of God down. I can't stick there because I'm thinking, when you were nothing, when were you not running your mouth like that? Why is it that now you are seeing the fault of the pastor or the woman pastor? Because now that God has done everything for you and you think you have arrived, the Bible says, God brought Israel out of Egypt and preserved yeah, Israel. God brought Israel out of Egypt by a prophet yes. and preserved Israel by a prophet, beloved of God. And that is why we have so many problems in Christendom today. People, that's what people say, I don't know you all, until you receive all your miracles. I don't know you until God has blessed you so much. It is after you are blessed, then I will see. And you still stay. And, and, I mean, and, 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 you are still, and you are still humble. Then I will know the kind of spirit you carry. You know when people, when um, they are going through issues of life, we tell them, come please, jump. They will ask you, how oh, high should I jump? How many times? Oh, how many times? Mm. But the moment things are rosy, you will, when you say, come, say, is, is it me you are calling like That's that? That's right, of course. Forgetting this, it's the same person that's been praying for you. That's why people of God, we need to be very careful what we do to the servants of God. Look, I want, one thing I believe, once you know that God has called you a servant of God, or not that servant of God, don't because now you think you have arrived, you think you can just... Talk to them anyhow. Is he even talk to them? Some people we even respect you in your presence. But it's when they are behind you, they they wash down their servants of God down. And who knows? Maybe as you are using that your mouth to wash them down. That servant of God is on our knees or in his knees saying, Father, every member of this church oh, I pray for them, oh, blah blah blah. Do this, do that. And you are somewhere blah, 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 saying nonsense about that servant of God. What we ever do? Moses mm. star. <laughs> because I have heard what they are talking about Moses. No, that's in why, the, honestly, in, 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 behind the scenes. That's why we need to be very, very careful. If you know, and and, and I'm, uh, you see, I'm not advocating that any ministry is perfect. There's no perfect ministry. Every ministry, until Jesus will come, we have one thing or the other that mm. I say, ah, you haven't done this man right. To so your point, you have the revelation, you have read chapter 2 and 3, mm -hmm. all the seven churches, none was perfect. None. I have this against you. Yes. I have this against you. Yes. And these are the churches in those days, oh. Mm -hmm. So I have this, there's no perfect church. Whatever they are yes. no perfect church. That's why at times I don't even mind telling you my own flaws. Because I'm just saying, look, oh, don't think you have seen a superhuman being, no. Oh. I have my limitations. And every day we are saying, Lord, I want more of you. Make me better. Let me be formed into your image. That's why I stop seeing servants of God and uh, people that, you know, they can never do wrong. Of course, people can make mistakes, but don't kill them because of the mistake. Eh, that one eh, is not called. But when you were having problem and the person was praying for you, you that time called. they were called. Now that your problem is over, now they are not called again. People just stop this moving about. It's too much in Christendom. May God help us in just Amen. Someone says, John 10, 5 says, they wouldn't follow Look, a stranger. stranger. They would run from him because they don't know his voice. Anyone who doesn't know the voice of a shepherd will be cheap prey to the voice of the stranger, of course. Very true. So you need to know the voice of your shepherd, of your pastor, 
And that's why Jesus says, I will give you pastors. Very, very, very important. And in the New Testament, we can see that every church had an elder, which was a pastor in those days, to mm -hmm. run it. And people, Bible, the Bible says that uh, Paul was talking about give double honor to those who preach and all that. Mm -hmm. so it's very important for people to respect their pastors. But as you said, the most important thing that to know where you God has planted you yes. and has flourished there. Anywhere you any church you are and you are flourishing is where I believe where God wants you to be. Don't transplant yourself. You know, transplanting is 50 mm. You know, in those days when we're doing agriculture, you take a plant away and go and plant it and go and transplant it somewhere else. Sometimes it doesn't flourish the way it's supposed to flourish because mm -hmm. the nutrients there is not as strong as where you obtain it from. And sometimes the the leaves will wither away and will dry and will die out. So mm -hmm. don't transplant yourself to where God has not planted mm -hmm. you. Stay where you have been planted, planted. and rooted and grounded so they can grow. You can always start planted. Stay where God has planted you so you can be planted and you can be rooted and grounded and you can grow in the Lord and things will be added unto you. May God give us that grace in Jesus' name. What about this question about Paul's living in Jerusalem? Where we just said is Jeremiah 3.15. Yes. He says, <coughs> excuse me, Jeremiah 3.15 says, And I will give you pastors yes, according to my own heart. Mm. We shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And do you know somebody can be in a ministry and they've been up a year ago? Mm. There are those kind of people when they are in church. Anything that is happening doesn't concern them. Mm. They'll say, mm, they have come again. Mm. Mm. What is the thing? Everything is mm. Everything is they will be rolling their eyes. When, when, when people are singing, they are not singing right. When prophecy is coming out, mm. when the word of God is coming, they are always mocking everything in their heart. That one is a very dangerous one too. Yes, sir. Somebody can be in the ministry and they are gone a year ago. They are gone two years ago. They are done. They are gone three years ago. Because everything they see, every, they see error in everything that is being done in that ministry. Be careful. And I believe that thing is the spirit of pride, mm. spirit of arrogance. And they think it's only when I pick the mic. Oh, that's that. Of fault finding. Thank you. It's only when I pick the mic. That is that. That is the only time God will move every other person. There, you know. So you see, there are some people who have what we call fake humility. When they come into the church, they look down on everything, look down on everything, chipping everything. No believer must be like that. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. When we come before the Lord, let's come with our heart. Do you know at times it is not any witch following any some people? It's not any wizard. It's not any occultic. That's what we call self Goliath. What is self Goliath? People will come in among the things of God. You know you are in the church. You know you are not living. You know that is where God has planted you. But everything that is being done, you chipping it with your eyes, with your mouth, with your heart. By that they say your heart like that. Mm, you raise your nose. Come on now. You better be careful. Somebody say everybody be careful. Because I've realized that when people when they have that spirit, they will think they are growing. They, if they are not careful, they will just be marching on the same spot. What makes a beautiful Christian? A beautiful Christian is somebody that is making, mm. making, making progress That's every true. day, every day. Every time, every time a Christian will come to church, will receive something from God. Every time they will come, they will receive. But you see, they are arrogant. Because even before they came, their shoulder is like that. Say, uh -huh. all the day after day. Well, that word is not for me. Nothing is ever for them. That prayer, ah, 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 it's not for me. I'm too much for that one. That word, eh, it's not for me. That singing, oh, mm, everything is never for them. May God deliver people in Jesus' name. And we will be planted and be rooted where God has established us. And no devil will pull us out. That's why. Don't let anybody pull you out of church. Mm. Every man for himself. Yes. Don't let, because it's happening. That's why you notice in churches, when somebody is leaving, there, are, there can be a mass exodus. Because the moment we say, are you still there? Me, I'm just watching that pastor. Then okay? the pastor, I'm just watching that. I give her three months. And, and by that you know it, they form a, they form a demonic mm. network, okay. a demonic clique. And then they will leave. And by that they leave, oh, I give them three months. Within three months, everybody's standing by him or herself. Mm. So why will you be a follow follow? May we not be a follow follow? Be rooted where God has planted. You know now, we are not just talking about BOCM now. We are talking about churches generally. People should stop. Open. Open from ministry to ministry. When you walk around, you cannot grow. And may God help us in Jesus' name. That way, where you read, I want to read it. There's something okay. that I want to, want okay. to bring out there. Where you read just now? Jeremiah 3 15. 3 15. It says, let me open it. I want to open it. The, 
Just one second. Jeremiah 3 15 says, And I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Some place says, Sorry. Pastors, who will guide hold you? Pastor, pastor. Sorry. Did that one again. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart, mm -hmm. who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. So you see, God has given you a pastor that are after his own heart. Mm. It is not you that determines your pastor. Mm. It is God that determines the type of pastor who will give to you. That's because true, he you knows know. that of your spirit, he knows the type of your, mm -hmm. your thoughts, your deeds, your, your ups and downs, your challenges. So he will give you a pastor after his heart that will match whatever you are going mm. through. Uh, when that pastor begins to pray and declare over your life, Deep. there will be a miracle. Mm. So it is not a pastor after your own heart. Mm -hmm. After your own desire, but a pastor after God's own heart, a pastor that God has chosen for after you. his own heart for you. Hmm. So we don't choose our pastors, it's God that chooses them for us. And there are people after God's heart, and the people who are who are whom we are chosen for, so that we can flourish in the things we are doing. Mm -hmm. Not pastors after our own heart that we are thinking that hey, this pastor, I like the way he dresses, I like mm -hmm. the way he speaks his phonetics, I like the way he he, he, mm. he joins words together. So because I like that, let me move and go to him. God may not choose that pastor for you. Mm. So stay where you have been planted and, and planted by God, a man or a woman after God's heart that can meet mm. your need at any mm. point in time. Because what is the use of having a pastor that is very well phonetics and all that, and you cannot have an audience with him or her, you cannot even move close to him or mm. her, so what is the use? So God mm. knows the type of pastor that you need and it gives, so many times people don't appreciate what they have, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's why they just throw them away I want to go and meet those glamorous I'm not against them, but those glamorous mm -hmm. those phonetic speaking, those dress, um, those quality, you know people, you know, there's an image and you think that because of that you want an Packaging. Packaging. And when you get there, mm -hmm. you don't have access. You don't have their phone number. You cannot move close to them. And remember where you left. It is you and your pastor that can move together. You can even talk to him at any point in time. And you cannot see the difference. So, uh, my advice, stay where God has planted mm -hmm. you before you uproot yourself. Don't uproot yourself. So that because many people who have uprooted themselves, they true, true shame and pride, they cannot come back. Mm -hmm. And God deliver us in Jesus' name. I remember someone that God was preaching in our church some years ago. He said when he became born again, he was growing, and then they wanted to go to a very glamorous church. He said they, will, he said they went there, they would dance, he was happy. Mm. God told him, he, the man was said, God told him, look, you are in the wrong place. Go to that church in your locality. He said, ah, me. He said he answered God, he obeyed. He went to a local church around him. That was where he got his deliverance. He said he would have been dancing and dancing the way he's just No, it's true. That's why. I remember, May yes. we not be in the wrong And he said place. that church was a local church. It had a roof, malaminium roof, nothing whatsoever. But that's where God delivered. The moment the man of God laid his hand on him, he fell down flat. And that's where he got his deliverance. deliverance. Unlike the church, he was dancing and dancing and dancing away. And nothing happened. In the crowd. In the crowd. That is why like we are talking. What it means, every pastor is the Lord made. Yes, so That is, you know, in that social care, we say, um, um, that is, um, that, that is, that is, um, we call it centered care. That is what is actually the Lord. What is just made for you? Do you know? You would think, oh, I can go to anywhere. When you go to anywhere, mm. and now I'm talking generally now. When you go to anywhere. The pastor that God has not called for you. You will meet any, any, anywhere you, blessing. They, no, 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 not even that. You meet <laughs> anywhere pastor. Because I'm telling you, God will put you in a place where your pastor can tolerate you. That's it. There's a pastor that cannot tolerate some things. And God knows how to distribute people. He will now say, okay, you stay here. Mm -hmm. This one can tolerate this kind of thing. Exactly. This one cannot. And look, look, go and look at the survey. This one can tolerate this. This one mm -hmm. cannot tolerate that. I'm telling you. So if somebody will now uproot himself or herself from a particular place, will now go to a place where the pastor is not talking enough for you. Oh, may we not miss Lord in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, we are pastors, and our fact pastors are saying that mm. sometimes to to form busy, to feel busy, somebody will come to your church, they may not be more than a few numbers or so, and they will give someone a promise six months. So that the people can see that they are busy. And where you are, you don't even need an appointment. You just walk up to your pastor and you don't have, you know, sometimes people don't appreciate what, what they, they have. have until 
they go otherwise and see mm -hmm. things in other people, and they begin to realize that they were enjoying where they were, but now it's coming back that is the issue. So instead of you going and wanting to come back, why don't you stay where you are? You can be rooted and grounded and be what God wants you to be and flourish there. And I believe you flourish in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. May we never, may we not make the wrong move Amen. or make a mistake in the name of Jesus. May God continue to uphold us in the name of Jesus. And can I just chip this in? You know now we are talking about churches, the rooted, the planted where you God has planted you because I will give you pastor. Mm -hmm. So also this issue of this social media. It is not everyone that is coming on social media that you can listen to. May we not eat the food that will give us food poisoning. Mm -hmm. Yes, so yes, thank God for everybody. You know, everybody now has their own platform, right? The grace of God. Thank God for Facebook, for YouTube, and the rest of them. But do you know? Know your stream. It is not everyone that can speak to your spirit man. Mm -hmm. It is not every food that you have to eat. Are, I remember one day, I'll never forget. It was very late in the night. I was going through YouTube and I saw this beautiful choir. Wow, because I love songs. And as I began to listen, and I was about to actually go and see who is their pastor, God said, I've not sent you. Leave that ministry alone. I said, yes, sir. So you see, we need to know where we are sent. And may God help us. We need to know who is sent to us. Don't just be eating everything you see. I can imagine now, as a human being, every food you see, you eat this, you eat that, you eat this. Ah, may we not have uh, health problems in Jesus' name. Mm. That's why we need to be very careful who is feeding us. I will give you pastors. You need to know whose voice you are listening to. You need to know the sound that is coming to you. Because what you listen to will affect your spiritual life. Yes, I mean, God help us in Jesus' name. And I think that's a word... A small word is enough for the wife. I don't know how to say it. So you've had, so please don't make the wrong move. Mm -hmm. Don't make a mistake. Don't move in a hurry. Stay where God has rooted and planted you so that you can be rooted and grounded and mm. grow and flourish mm. where you are. Yeah. I'll be the way you are. It's where God wants you to be. As I said before, what are the signs you are flourishing? You are feeling spiritually. Yes, you are growing. You are growing. Mm -hmm. You are being schooled when you do wrong. Mm -hmm. You are being cautioned when you do wrong so that you can do right. You have a pastor who is cautioning you and telling you that you have done wrong, go this way. That pastor loves you. Rather than a pastor looking at you because of the money you are giving, say so it doesn't matter. Grace will cover you. So, mm. you see, so you are going to a place whereby the pastor is not afraid to correct you and call. No matter how much you are giving, no matter how effective you are in the ministry or the work, mm. you can still be called to order. I tell you, that's a great place you will be. And you are in that place, you are flourishing. Your wife, your husband is flourishing. Your children are flourishing. They are being blessed. Then, that's a right place and a good place to be. Mm -hmm. And that's where God wants you to be. And then when you go there, you have you experience peace and tranquility. That there's, there's a peace that you cannot explain. Each time you go there, that means that that's where God wants you to be. Amongst other signs and other things that we can, mm -hmm. you know of, those are actually the major signs that you know there. And you and even when you have dreams about a place, it's a peaceful dream, you understand? Yes. And you are happy and you are glad. <coughs> so I believe that those are the signs that we know that where we are, that's where God wants us to be rooted and grounded. And may God help us in the name of Jesus. You know, it's coming to me as we are talking. May we not look for foster pastors. You know, we are foster parents. Yes. You know, let's be real. Foster parents, I'm not saying every one of them, but most, you will notice that there's no relationship. It's all about the money. the money. The government is paying me. I'm looking after you. No love, no nothing. The child is saying, I want to jump in front of trailer. I say, ah, don't jump in front of trailer so that my money will not stop. <laughs> but just if you, you know, they will do anything they want to do, the child wants to do, say, just go and do it because they don't really care. Those are fosters, pastors. They are like foster parents. May we not fall into their hands in Jesus' name. Amen. It's the truth. I know, I know, I know. I know. This word, this is one part I was saying joking that somebody went to the cliff and wants to jump, but they were fed up of life, they felt everything, and they called their pastor. And the pastor said, Okay, wait, wait, don't jump yet. Let me come so I can push you so you can jump. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> may, may we not experience such pastors in Jesus' name. You understand? So may God help us and uphold us in Jesus' name. Or some pastor friend, you know, we have pastors that their friends that say they are. Any emergency after 5 p.m. is no emergency to me. My phone is off after 5 p.m. until so every emergency must wait until my phone comes up in the morning. After my phone on, you know. So 
you know where you're supposed to be rooted and grounded mm. and may we not miss it in the name of jesus mm. may god uphold us in jesus mm. name let's quickly do what we have today and the time has gone and god will bless us all in jesus name. so let's just speak about it blessed <coughs> are they one two three four <coughs> five six Verse seven Nine. Three, four, five, six, seven. It's verse 9. I know they have to come to you like I'm here. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to talk more about peacemakers next week by God's grace. Who are peacemakers? What does it take to become a peacemaker? Being a peacemaker doesn't mean that you have to be stupid and people override you to become a, a peacemaker. So he said, better are the peacemakers. So who are the peacemakers? What are the qualities of a peacemaker? And are you, as a child of God, are you a peacemaker? All this we we'll speak more about next week by the grace of God. Mm. Because this word, this that word goes along with peacemakers. Who are the peacemakers? And what are the characteristics of a peacemaker and all that? So next week by God's grace, we we'll talk more about that. And we go in depth to that to know if you are a peacemaker, not only peacemaker in your church, but as a place of work, in your family, in the bus, in the in the environment you are, anywhere you are, are you actually a peacemaker? Even within yourself. Even within yourself. When you come, when you see two people quarreling <laughs> and you now speak, does the quarrel intensify? Escalates. Escalates or does it de-escalate and reduce? So that will tell you the type of peacemaker we've got. I've seen people, remember some people are quarreling and arguing and some people coming and the argument now is <laughs> a, a notch up. So what type of peacemaker are you? So this all, dear Samuel, thank you very much. All this will treat next week by the grace of God because peacemaker is very important. If you have peacemakers in this world, I tell you, if, if a peacemaker had risen between Ukraine and 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 russia. russia i believe they would have stopped the war now but there's no worthy peacemaker that can rise and speak to putin and speak to the other person that okay come together let's see how all of them are going for their own benefit you understand interest. so interest that's it. interest so when a peacemaker comes as a peacemaker but have an interior interest it doesn't usually benefit whatever is on that so all this we are more we we'll talk about next week by the grace of God and God will bless and increase and prosper us, prosper everyone in the name of Jesus. So what type of peacemaker are you? Next week we we'll go into that. Yeah, yeah, just to just to buttress that um, Matthew 5 9 mm -hmm. is Hebrews 12 14. Yes. Hebrews 12 14 says pursue peace with, with all everyone and as well as holiness. Without that which no one will see the Lord. Lord. Mm, so peace is important to God. Strive for peace mm. with all men. So you must strive for it. You must pursue it. <coughs> you see, when you pursue something, it's not an easy task. When you strive for something, it's not an easy task. But the Bible says to strive for peace, pursue peace amongst all men. So it's something that we must pursue. To be a peacemaker, you must also be a pursuer and tell who will strive for it. And may God give us that grace mm -hmm. in the name of So we we'll stop there. And God will help us here. Just mm -hmm. one prayer point. That Lord, don't let me make a mistake in my mm -hmm. Christian walk. Don't let me move when you haven't told me to move. Don't let me go ahead of you. Let me walk and move at your pace. And where you want me to be, let me be there. Let me give you the name of Jesus. Let me come in the name of Jesus. God, I look up to you tonight, oh God. I shall be rooted. My children will be rooted. God, we follow you. We pursue you. We do what we do. And we steadfast in you, oh God. God, they will lock me out of your hands, oh God. And I call on that day. I pray for my children, for my brothers, that's children. They shall be rooted in the Lord, oh God. And we start trying to hold on. Let your will be done in our lives, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's tell God, Lord, whatever is out there, trying to lure me into wrong places. I'm not allowed to fulfill my destiny. Father, deliver me. Yes, Let me be at the right place at the right time. Let's yes. begin to pray. Mighty God, I will not be distracted. No distraction, no God. Father, touch my children. They will not be distracted. They will not be lured away. Father, uphold us, oh God. Let us settle with you, oh God. Healer no more. Satire at all shatter. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We have had your word, mighty Father. 
that we should be rooted and grounded in you. Mm. That grace, Lord, give it to us. Mm. The grace to obey your voice, listen to your voice and obey. Mama, mm. Father, the grace to be to be where you want us to be, rooted and grounded, or give it to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Demons and powers and devil will not lay us away Amen. through our friends, mm -hmm. through circumstances, mm -hmm. through whatever that will not be laid away mm -hmm. out of where you want us to be. Amen. You can be uphold us mm -hmm. and your name shall be glorified, honored, and praised. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. We give all the praise Amen. in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. We pray. Amen. Before we go, if you want to give your life to Christ, put us in that prayers. Let's really do that and God bless us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are out there, you're not born again, beloved. The greatest miracle is to be saved. Yes. You need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yes. Just say this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come before, I you. come before you. I am a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive, me my sins. Forgive my sins. Wash me with your blood. With blood. I, accept you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' In name. Jesus name. You have just said that prayer. Congratulations. You have just been born again. Your name has just been written in the last book of life. Get yourself a Bible. Get into a living church. Look for a living pastor, yes. And um, you know what? Be rooted in God. And God will bless everyone in Jesus' name. Congratulations to just one again. I have just said that prayer. If you're living also in London, you are taking the opportunity to invite the church. That's our church address, as you can see. As I myself, we are eagerly waiting to welcome you Fridays at 7 p.m. and then Sundays at 10 a.m. And this Saturday, coming by God's grace, we have a special program, a healing crusade, healing conference. Make sure you join us at on Saturday. And 29th of October at 12 noon, we shall be in the church for prayers. If you are sick in any area, this program is for you. 12 noon, make sure you come. We will touch you like never before. In the name of Jesus, and there shall be great signs and wonders and miracles, even in every life and destiny. Father, what should they expect when they come? Healing. Healing. The anointing of God will touch you. Yes. And there shall be total healing, in total deliverance in yes. the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And don't forget our programs. Every um, every Wednesday like this, we have Bible study. Join us, and God will bless in Christ and prosper you. So we pray. And don't forget, the time is changing for those who are watching from mm. Africa. The time is changing from next week. So if you are watching, for example, from Nigeria, that means that you go to have the program 8 p.m. at your end. And if you are watching in Ghana, from Ghana, that means that it's going to be 7 p.m. your time because we are aligned with Ghanaian time and Nigerian time will be ahead of us. So mm -hmm. other places. So don't forget that the time will change so that when you come on 7 p.m., you say, you're not there. We are there. It's one hour ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and people like him from Ghana and Co. don't come at 8 o'clock because you would have done it for one hour then because we're going to be at the same time with you. And so on. So God bless in peace and prosper in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And then we have, sorry, um, try, um, um, we have, sorry, the old. No, no. I hear my cry. Yeah. By the grace of God, we have air my cry every yes. day, 6 a.m. Join mm -hmm. us and God will bless you. Every Monday, 10 p.m. and every Wednesday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you get time and God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. And every Tuesday, we have prophetic hour. Join us. You can see next Tuesday, we will have prayer, uh, prophetic dialogue and prayer, special prayer. So join us. Don't forget to bring your olive oil and nothing I want to pray on it. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. And Thursdays, we have a mountain moon prayers. Join us. I tell you. We will remove every mountain from your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. And please don't forget our monthly programs. By the grace of God, the end of this month, the last three days, which is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we have here my cry, oh God, three days praying and fasting. Join us the last three days of this month, and God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. And the, and the first week to the seventh of every month, we have a um, six o'clock prayer meeting where we ask for the power of the Holy Ghost. Join us, and God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. The third Friday of every month, we have Holy Ghost Night VJ at 12 midnight. Join us, your life shall never remain the same again. And then the last day of every month, which is this Monday coming, 31st, 11 for the 5 for 30 minutes, we have got Diga explaining the question of our debut. Join us and tell you, your life shall never remain the same again. Amen. And please don't forget our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, don't forget to press the little notification button so that you never miss any of our program ever again we will, we will be notified and god will bless every one of us in jesus name amen amen and don't forget to for youtube and facebook like it love it follow it and share it and god will bring you the blessing mm -hmm. and prosper you mighty and marvelous in jesus name and once again don't forget that we're having a special program coming up let me repeat it again the 29th of um this month it is this saturday by God's grace, at 12 noon, healing crusade, join us, and the light shall never remain the same again. Amen.
Please let's go for God. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Let's begin to pray to God. Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, grant our request, Amen. work your wonders, Amen. and let your name glorify. Amen. Thank you that we bless you. Thank you, you shall testify. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining. God will bless you and prosper you. The grand voice of God for our lives will come to pass. And we are looking forward to seeing you tomorrow on Hear My Cry and um, 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 Mighty Movie Players. And on Friday, prophetic hour in the church. Make sure you come at 7 p.m. and God will bless you. And Saturday again, that's the address. We have healing conference at 12 noon Sunday, 10 a.m. Join us and God will bless you in peace and prosper you mightily. And we bless once again. Thanks for joining. Thanks for making your comments. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for staying put. We appreciate you. God will honor and bless and prosper you. No, just there's a key I see. God's giving everybody a key. Hallelujah. Begin to mention the type of key you want, whether key of progress or success or breakthrough. I see keys dropping, dropping, dropping. So mention the type of key you want. And it shall be yours in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord shall begin to work his wonders and miracles, even every life and destiny. Once again, thank you for joining. God bless you. I appreciate you. And God will honor you. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you so much for tonight. God will bless you even more and more. In Jesus' name. You are all blessed in Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace? One, two. And the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love of God, God and the truth of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.